What's going on everybody, it's Denver and welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to show you an experiment that I've been creating over the last few days, where we're gonna be using OpenAI Dolly 2 in Unity to basically decorate a museum that I call the AI Museum. We're gonna start with a blank canvas and then take that blank canvas into something that, you know, resembles things that we're thinking, things that we are communicating to OpenAI. And then those images are going to be put into different areas in our AI museum. A rock material, a seamless colorful tile, a seamless colorful tile, A picture of a kid playing piano. A painting of Picasso. A futuristic VR painting. A picture of a kid playing piano in an auditorium. So the ultimate question is how did I build it? What components did I use? How you can do something similar? So that's what I want to walk you through today. So if we look at the components that I currently use for this demo, I'm using the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit. This is something that is very common and very popular in Unity. I'm also using the Meta Voice SDK, but this time I didn't want to download the Oculus integration. I only downloaded the Meta Voice SDK, which is also an option, and I'm going to be putting that in the description below. And also the OpenAI API, right? You need to create an account in OpenAI API and also tell it what you want to use. Do you want to use, you know, text generation? Do you want to use actual image generation? So I'll show you what endpoints I ended up using. In addition to that, I'm also using a GitHub OpenAI package, which I'm going to be linking below as well. And I wanted to thank the creator of that because that actually saved me a lot of time. So if we look at what got generated, and this is basically what I call my plain canvas. This is a museum. There's really nothing in it. I just have a bunch of frames, a statue, and also a floor. And then there's a couple of teleport areas that I can go to, right? And then I can take something like that and convert it into something like this. In this case, I didn't tell it to do a seamless uh, material, like a seamless tile. So you can kind of see the seams on the, the edges in here. It does a good job when you say seamless, uh, you know, texture, like if you want to do a seamless style, it, it creates a really good representation of how it would map, you know, from one tile to another so that it thinks things align better. But you can see here that I have, you know, a prompting here, somebody playing piano. I think I said, you know, just draw a kid playing piano. And then there's a couple of different ones in here. I also changed the sky. And then in this case, I said, you know, I wanted to see the sun. This was a typo, uh, not a typo, but something that I said incorrectly about a brain device and it just drew uh, an actual drawing of a person. And there is like a Picasso, two different Picasso paintings. And this one I did tile, and you can kind of see how it tiles perfectly. I did a grass material on the statue. This one I think I did a rock material, but that gives you an idea of the variations that you can create for your own experiences. So XRI components that I'm using, I did the study assets the complete XR origin setup. This one is really cool because it comes with a rig, it comes with controllers, interactors, locomotion. Basically, you get the whole package by using the started assets. That way you don't have to set things on from scratch. I also bound to different selections on the Ray interactor. And, and the cool thing with that is it allows me to detect, okay, which object am I currently pointing at? And, and that's really helpful because if I'm pointing at the floor, or I'm pointing at a frame. I wanna make sure that I have logic in there that handles how to map those correctly. And for instance, in the ground, I needed to make sure that the tiles were going to be, you know, the value on the material was going to be high enough to make sure that things were gonna tile, were going to tile correctly. So I just had different, you know, different type of options when it comes to, you know, doing a hover selection because this is detecting the object that is selected so I keep that in memory. And then once I have that in memory, I know when I say something with my voice, what object I'm going to be applying that prompt to. And then on the selection enter, I basically just activate 
that made a voice and that's by pressing the trigger button on the controller. That's how I ended up doing it. And when I do that, it basically starts a voice activation and then I can start saying something to that meta voice SDK. And I have a couple of examples that I'm going to show you. Next, here's an example of the complete XR origin setup that comes from the starter assets. I have a video about that. I can link it above it as well so you guys can look at it. And then the bindings, how I ended up doing it is um, I have this one on the left controller and right controller. I have the hover enter here, which is mapped to what I call a museum image generator. And then I also have the same thing here on the select enter, but I'm mapped to a different, basically a different method that allows me to actually start, you know, the generation, the, the selection of the object so that I can activate it with my voice and basically apply the texture. And, and this one just shows you the rig and also the race against the statue. So if we move to the voice SDK, what am I using in the voice SDK? I'm using the app voice experience. And I didn't want to use something that was too complicated. This just basically allows me to drag and drop a, comp a component and that component it's called the app voice experience. Once I have that set up, which I did a video about that as well, then I can basically start getting the transcript, which is what I needed for this experience. I didn't need to do any mappings from my voice to methods in Unity, which is what you can do with Intense and additional features that Voice SDK provides. All I really needed was a transcript. So once I finish providing a voice, you know, an audio, audio recording, then I want to know, I want to get the text that I can send to OpenAI so that it can generate an image, right? So that's really why I use this Meta Voice SDK. And this custom voice controller with prompt class is basically a mono behavior that I have to communicate with the actual OpenAI. So just basically this class right here that I use to activate the voice. And then this shows you the on-frame selector that I described on the previous slide. So if you go and move on, once I get the full transcription from the voice experience, I have a listener that is attached to it. This gets me a transcript. And then I can say, you know what? I want to know what the transcript was. So now my image generator instance, which is a singleton generate image, gets the transcript and basically makes a call to OpenAI DALI 2, which is the model, to basically you know generate an image and get the image back. Once I get the image back and getting a, an action here, a callback, I'm going to be receiving the transform and I'm also going to be receiving the texture. And then I just say, you know what? I know the I know the render. This transform is going to be the one that I selected with the ray. So I know that it has a render and I know that it has a material. So just basically setting the texture on the main text. And then that basically just says, uh, change the texture on the material. And then here I'm just saying, you know, partial transcript just display on a text box. On the OpenAI, this is really cool. And, and I actually haven't used it in the past until recently. So you do need to create an account on platform.openai.com. And then once you get an account, you're going to get a free tier. I think it allows you to, I don't remember if it was $18, $20, but mine expired. I didn't use it when I created the account. So if you use it, make sure that you have, you know, you have the credits and you use it right away. Otherwise they're going to expire. I ended up just putting my credit card and it's actually really cheap. I spent about $3 so far and I've done many, many different requests to generate images. So the, the pricing varies based on resolution. I'm going to show you what that is. Also, the endpoints for image generation are going to allow you to generate images, are going to allow you to edit images. And edit means that if you were to draw a transparent hole, maybe on the middle of the image, and you wanted to fill it in with something different, it's going to, you know, it's going to do that for you in a way that it maps beautifully to the original image. And variations, you can also get different variations from an image that you, you already generated. So that's another endpoint that is available. On the pricing side, these are all the different tiers. So 0 0.020 per image if you do their highest resolution. And then it goes down to 256 by 256, which is, that is the price. So it's really, I mean, it's not super, super cheap, but at the same time, it's something that we could start experimenting with. And to me, I think it makes sense. I use it for a couple of days. And like I said, I haven't even spent more than $3. So, but if you start getting a lot of volume, that's when things start to change. So those are the pricing. And then these are just some different Python scripts that they provide on their website. You can do Python, I think you can do curl, and you can also do, I think it's JavaScript, if I remember correctly. 
But you can see in here, this is the actual image creation. You have a prompt. You have how many variations you want to get from that prompt. This is n equal to 1. That means it's going to give you just one image. But you can get multiple images from that prompt if you like. And also, the resolution and how you get it back. In this case, this is just a variation from an existing image. And then it tells you, it allows you to specify how many you want to get back. And also the resolution, the one that I want to experiment with on the next video, it's basically doing an edit. So you can see here that you have an image, which is the original image. And then you can do a mask, which in this case is the, you know, the silhouette of this flamingo, which is right here. And then the output is going to give you a flamingo because the new prompt, it, it tells OpenAI that, you know, you want to get a containing, containing a flamingo, which basically fills in the original image, so which is really impressive. So I want to do that in Unity at some point. I think right now, just keep it simple. And then the package that I'm using, and I'm going to give a shout out to this person because I know I know him for a while and he's really good. So make sure that you give, give him a star in this repo. You go to github.com rage against a pixel and then this is going to be the package that you want to use and it has a lot of documentation in there how you can get things set up including the open ai keys how you set those up you can create environment variables you can create a scriptable object so it's really 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 easy to use i honestly it was super easy to use less than five minutes ten minutes i was able to get things going and these are just a few examples of the scriptable object and how do you use it so basically, I specify the API key, the organization ID, and then this is my implementation where I'm, where I'm calling into one of the methods that he provides, which in this case is generate image async. So one comment that he made is Unity is it's really problematic when it comes to async, right? So in this one, I'm doing an asynchronous method and I'm doing an await. And normally in, in .NET applications, you do await and async you know, very frequently. But with Unity, it's a little more tricky. So just make sure that, that you always wrap this in, you know, in a try and a catch. That way, if Unity for some reason doesn't release or, you know, it can't really await it, you don't want that to keep running and running and never get, you know, get it back. So just make sure that you do a try and a catch. And I did it this way and this worked, you know, pretty well. So in this case, I'm just saying, okay, here's a prompt. Here's how many images I want to get. And here's the image size. I specify a small by default. And then because you can get multiple images, I ended up doing a for each. So basically, if you get multiple results, that means multiple images. For the most part, in my scenario, I only needed one image. So, But you can change that if you like. And here's a callback that I showed you before that you know, you're passing a transform and a texture. Again, this is my own implementation so that I can call back with that information on, the, on my own implementation. And then here's some of the additional methods that he provides. Generate an image async. Here's an overload and then also to edit and also to do image variations. Then I also wanted to you know, show you that I'm also doing a training in XR course at www.learnxr.io XR courses. So that's still available. I'm still doing a pre-sale. So just make sure that you enroll before February 25th, which is the, end, the deadline for signing up with the pre-sale cost. Otherwise, it's going to be a little higher when it comes to actually getting the course, which is going to be right now, it's 50% off. So after that, it's going to go to regular price. And I'm doing a, a VR development course with the XR Interaction Toolkit, which is what I use today. And I'm also doing an AR Foundation one, which is also for beginners, but I'm going to be covering all different features. And then also a free one, which is going to go through coding with C Sharp. So really recommend to look at that. And that's everything for today. If you guys have any questions, if you like, videos like this, the experiments that I'm doing. If you want to see another video where I'm doing an edit with OpenAI and Dolly 2, let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to work on that next. Thank you very much, guys.